Hi everyone! Today we're doing a tutorial, a brown butter bite tutorial start to finish with all the tips and tricks and variations that you need to make them the way you like. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds. I hope you come along this journey with me, check out my website, check out some of my other videos. And if you are new here, welcome back. I hope you enjoy today's video. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, I made a video and I made one of those uh, viral TikTok butter boards. And um, it brought up a lot of questions and people needed some clarifications and that sort of thing. So, um, so I just want to backtrack a little bit. I want, I want to show you some of the butter bites, I guess is the best way to describe them that I've been making, why I'm making them, and uh, just different tips and tricks. I'm going to make uh, both unwhipped and whipped today and when I like others, you know, one versus the other. So, so it's just going to be a little more complete of a video. I, I won't be making a butter board at the end, but I certainly will link that video down below so that you can take a look at what a butter board is if you're wondering right now. So the butter. Okay, so this all started for me when I watched um, a video. It was on Steak and Butter Gal's channel, and I'm going to link that video below. She interviewed, she interviewed Dr. Bright, and Dr. Bright was saying women should eat a stick of butter every day. Um, that it was anti-inflammatory. There was like, you have to listen to the video, you have to go watch the video because I cannot explain it in, you know, the way that it was presented. But it really made me think, you know, I'm eating mostly protein, I'm probably not doing a very good uh, protein to fat ratio. So I started out um, just with a stick of butter and just looking at it made me wonder, well, how am I going to, how am I going to get that in every day? And so I, I took a stick and I, you know, made a little bowl in the fridge and uh, divided it equally into eight pieces because there's eight tablespoons per stick. And I could not even get halfway through by the end of the day. Like it was just too much butter to just, you know, eat the butter like this. And so I start, I, I had already been playing with these uh, bites and the brown butter and eating those. So I thought, you know, I think that would make it easier. So rather than just eating the solid butter, um, I'm trying to, I, I do a little bit of this still, but here's what I've been doing. So I've been making these. So this one here is a, just one teaspoon of browned butter. There's literally nothing else in that. All I did was make brown butter on the stove and pour it into these little cute molds. So these molds are one teaspoon each. So three of them equals a tablespoon. So I have a lot less difficulty eating three of those than one of those. I mean, it's just, it, it just is. These are left over, actually, I just pulled them out of the freezer. They're left over from my butter board that I made. Um, they do have bacon bits in them, but I'm going to make some today that don't have any bacon bits in them, so it's just all about the fat. And these are the whipped ones. So all this is is whipped brown butter with bacon bits. And those are about a teaspoon each of butter as well. And, and you, I made them in the same molds. This pan here, um, I've had this pan forever. I used to make the greatest keto treats <laughs> in this pan, like little fat bombs and uh, brownie bites and, and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm glad I still have it because it also makes a great butter bite pan. And it makes them this size and it holds a tablespoon. Like this is a full tablespoon that, that goes in here. 
Um, so that's handy if you, you know, because you can make obviously a, a greater amount in one pan. Now, for those of you who are still using um, sweeteners or, or maybe some, maybe you're using keto chow or you're using some other uh, protein powder that's flavored or whatever, I'm going to show you, well, I won't, sh I won't be making them today, but I'll tell you an easy way to make protein powder uh, butter bites in this pan. Um, Cause that, that might be a good thing for Halloween coming up. And if you need some, you know, chocolate bites or whatever in there, I, I will tell you how to make it. I, I'm not doing that myself right at the moment, but um, no reason why you can't if, if you're still doing sweeteners. So here's another little thing I pulled out of my stash of silicone pans. This one holds two tablespoons. So that's another one that you could use. And then I saw a couple of people uh, just using jars. So you could make your brown butter, just pour it into the jar. You can make your whipped brown butter and, and just have it in the jar. And then just, you know, take it out with a knife to put it on something when you need it. This would be more for people who just do uh, carnivore or they just do BBBE, beef, bacon, butter, and eggs and they don't measure. Um, these are ideal for people who feel like they need to measure, they need to find out, well, how much butter am I having? And, and that's why I was breaking it up like this. But this is a good storage option as well. So uh, because I am running low on uh, these bites, I'm going to make some more for myself. Now, so let's talk about whipped versus unwhipped first. So these are unwhipped brown butter. It is literally just the butter uh, browned. Once you pour it in there, it gets this nice dark little top, which is very attractive. I usually do this with salted butter because I just love the taste of, of that. I mean, it, it kind of it melts in your mouth and you just, you just get a lot of satisfaction from it. Um, these ones here, they have a completely different flavor, even though it's brown butter, the fact that it's whipped and the solids are kind of mixed all the way through the bite just makes it taste a little bit different. And so it's your choice whether you want to use salted or unsalted on this one. Um, so, you know, it doesn't like this. This definitely is a personal choice um, to to have. You know, what kind of butter are you going to use? Grass fed? Are you are you going to use regular conventional butter? Organic? I mean, those choices are up to you and your budget. Butter, butter sure is pricey. I was so happy the other day when I uh, took my son to Whole Foods to do a little bit of shopping. They happened to have grass fed butter on sale that day. But, I mean, I used to pay $4.99 for a whole pound of it, and it was $4.99 for a piece this size. So this is two sticks of butter. It really has gone up. Um, it's, it's heartbreaking, but we need it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two pans on the stove going. I'm going to show you, there's kind of three different stages that the brown butter goes through. And people who cook use that brown butter differently depending on how dark it's gone. And so I'll, I'll show you that and I'll show you kind of where I like it. I mean, you can stop as soon as they turn brown. Um, that will, you know, that will be flavorful still. Um, but I take it right to the edge and, and that has the most intense flavor. So that's how I made these. With it. it almost looks like they have chocolate on top, doesn't it? So I'm going to put these back and get my butter ready at the stove and meet you over there and we will make two batches of brown butter. And one of those batches I will be uh, whipping up to make whipped brown butter and one will be like this. Before we get started, I want to thank Element for sponsoring today's video. 
Okay, so what is Element? Element is a super tasty electrolyte drink that has all of the things you do need and none of the things you don't need, none of the BS. It contains a scientifically backed formula of 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium which we use to balance our electrolytes. I used to think that electrolytes were important only for keto beginners, but I was getting regular leg cramps, um, you know, sometimes nausea, sometimes headaches. And what I found out is that I actually need to be taking them all the time. And so um, I have really been enjoying the taste. I love the citrus, it's my favorite flavor. So whether you're using it in a recipe or making some hot coffee with it or a cold drink, electrolytes are really for anybody who is following low carb, keto, paleo, carnivore. It's, it's for all of us. And right now, Element is offering to my viewers a free sample pack with any purchase from their website of Element. This sample pack contains all eight flavors, so it gives you a good opportunity to try all the flavors out and figure out which ones you like best. Uh, I like the uh, both the watermelon and the citrus. Some of you who are doing no sweeteners, you might like the unflavored. You'll still get all of the good ingredients, but no sweetness at all. So that might be a better option for you. So to get your sample pack, go to drinklmnt.com slash ketogenic woman. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash ketogenic woman to get your sample pack that is free with any purchase of element that link will be down below in the description as well so let's get back to making our butter bites thank you element for sponsoring this video okay so i'm here at the stove i have two pans and in each pan is the equivalent of two sticks of butter which is, uh, let's break that down, that's 16 tablespoons. I need to Google it. So I know how many tablespoons it is. Quarter cup, 62 mils is one cup. So I am melting, so it's, no. So I, I see that the grass-fed is melting much faster than the this one is not grass-fed. This it is organic, but it's not grass-fed. Now it is two different types of pans, so I don't know. So at this point, all we're doing is melting the butter, and then we will be waiting for um, it to get to the appropriate color of brown. And that might be different for every person. So now that that is melted, I'm turning it right down to, uh, on my stove, it's four to five, a medium, like kind of a medium low. This one is still, we're still waiting for it to melt. So I think I need to get my spatula now. Make sure that you use a spatula that can withstand the heat. <laughs> I actually melted, the first time I did this, I melted my spatula that I've had for probably 40 years. I was just doing what I'm doing now. And then later on, I noticed that it had gone all funny. So I think back then, they didn't make it out of, like it was wasn't silicone it was probably something else so i bought this to replace that one and this one apparently can go up to 600 degrees fahrenheit so i thought okay it's safe for browning butter <laughs> Okay, so this one here is starting to caramelize. I can see, um, well, once I sort of scoop away all the bubbliness, the foaminess on the top, I can see that it's going a little bit browner. So 
So probably you should be able to see these brown swirls that I'm making. You can see that it's, it's getting to be a, a nice light brown color. So at this point, some people could take this off. You're, you are going to have a nicer flavor. Um, in cooking applications, some people will take it off at this point to use in sauces for, you know, whatever they're making. Um, I like to go a little darker for these brown bites. So, you know, the, it, it, is, it is entirely up to you. If you, if you just wanted a mild flavor, take it off right now. You can see that it is, you've got, you know, the solids, the butter solids in there are a nice light brown color and that's perfectly acceptable. It's all up to your taste. At this point, you want to watch it because now, um, you know, it's getting darker and even just 30 seconds can make a huge difference. It can go from, you know, that nice blonde caramel we just had. It's getting darker. It can go, um, I take it sometimes all the way up to a chocolate brown. Um, but at, beyond that, it could go black. <laughs> so you don't want it to go necessarily to black because then it might taste burnt and um, that probably wouldn't be good. So I'm actually going to stop here because I wanted to try it just a little bit lighter. So I'm going to turn my heat off and just, I, I usually let them cool for a few minutes before I pour it into my molds or anything else because um, it's pretty it's going to be pretty hot right now and I think I'll just move the pan over here and I'm going to take this one off okay so this one hasn't even started going brown uh, but it is it is sizzling but it should start to go brown any minute now I find it interesting that this one is taking longer and I don't know if it's because it's a different type of butter or if it's the pan, but oh, there we go. So you can see the brown swirls are starting in there now. This one's a lot, also a lot more foamy than the other one was, but it's definitely changing color. That sounds like Pippi back there. Yeah, look at that. When I, when I move the foam aside, you can see that nice brown color at the bottom. I will say, you know, when you're doing this, you don't want to walk away and let it simmer and come back because <laughs> you might come back to burnt butter and butter is way too expensive not to keep an eye on it and make sure it's not going to burn. So that looks like a nice color to me as well. Um, I have gone, you know, super dark on this. I have gone a lot darker and, and I like it but today I'm going to do them both about the same. So, so I'm going to let them both cool down so that I can pour them where I want to pour them and then uh, we'll be right back to the next step. Okay, so I gave these, uh, this brown butter five minutes to cool and what I'm going to do now, just to make it easier to deal with, I'm pouring it into a uh, measuring cup, carefully, getting all my brown bits out. This is where the flavor is, so we want that in there. So I'm going to scrape every little bit out that I can here. And yeah, I'm getting a little bit on the counter here, but that's okay. It happens. Okay. So I'm gonna put that aside. And uh, I'm going to do the same with the other butter, but I'm using a bigger uh, cup because the other butter is the one I'm going to whip. I'm just gonna grab that. 
So it's the same idea. We're go going to uh, put it in here. I'm just gonna grab a glove because that pan is still hot. This pan is much uh, heavier, so it needs two hands to do the pouring. And again, I want all my good tasty brown bits. I think I might have just got some brown butter bits all over me. So while I am dealing with this one, I'm going to put this one in the fridge because this is the one I'm whipping. And uh, before you whip it, you want it to be completely cooled down. So it is quite warm on the bottom, so I'm going to uh, put it on a uh, folded up towel in the fridge. So uh, probably you might want to do that too, or just let it sit on the counter a little bit longer before you put it in the fridge. All right, I have a cutting board here that has got brown butter drops all over it. I'll have to lick that after the camera's off. Okay, so what we have here is we have this. Now I know it's tempting to pour it, um, and you can, you know what, There's a, here's another idea that I didn't mention. What some people have done is they'll put parchment paper, or maybe you have one of those silicone mats that fits your pan exactly. You can just pour this in and then put it in your freezer and then break it apart like bark. Um, you know, the Christmas bark or almond bark or um, all that. So, but what I like to do is I like to stir it and pour my teaspoon into each little mold. I know that that takes a little bit more time, but then you know that each one of these is about a teaspoon. And then you get that pretty flower with the dark top on it that I showed you before. I don't know, I guess maybe a, Maybe I'm about a little bit of presentation on my plate. And if that's not your thing, go ahead. Or if you don't need to measure, go ahead and just pour it, you know, like bark and break it up into pieces. I'm stirring occasionally because the brown butter bits like to settle at the bottom, which is the other advantage of doing it like this. Okay, so I have uh, apparently 57 of these little things. It's not going to be exact. Um, it should have been 16 tablespoons. Maybe I didn't fill them up quite enough. Um, I could have, you know, I see that I could have filled them up a little bit more, but anyways, you can be more accurate if you like. So what I will do with this is I have a stand-up freezer in the garage and I will just put this on, this, this whole thing on one of the racks in there and let that freeze. So uh, then I'm going to whip the other butter that's in the fridge and those are gonna go in here one tablespoon each. Okay, we are back and I've taken this out of the fridge but I wanted to show you See how it's starting to thicken at the sides? That is when it's cold enough that you can start whipping it. I did have somebody contact me the other day. They said they whipped their brown butter and it didn't whip up. And I'm the only thing I can think of is that it was just too soon. It needs to be, it needs to be cold and starting to thicken up. If it's still hot, I don't think you're gonna get whipped uh, butter. So I am going to start whipping this now. I just have, I'm just using my hand beater here. Um, but I did wanna say, okay, so for those of you with a sweet tooth that are still, um, you know, if you're, if I'm not doing uh, sweeteners right now. Uh, well, you know, I did for Thanksgiving and I might for Halloween, whatever. I'm very limited. But for those of you who use keto chow or some other protein powder, this is where you would add a scoop in here. Although I would probably, I only used um, two sticks of butter in here. I would probably use a scoop of keto chow to four sticks of butter. I guess it really depends on how sweet and flavorful you like it. This is, this is the time you would put it in now. Um, maybe chocolate or maybe chocolate toffee, caramel. Oh, there's so many good flavors that I think would 
tastes great in here. So this is where I would add it. Or you could just do some cinnamon or some pumpkin spice seasoning and a little bit of sweetener. Make your bites. Halloween, if it's, you know, if you're giving out these candies, it is, I would say you probably would only snack on three or four of them before you got really full because of the, the fat here. So let's, let's go with this. This has nothing in it except butter. Yeah, I'm gonna, okay. Okay, so uh, mine was not cold enough because it is thickening, but it's not whipping up. I'm going to put it back in the fridge, set my timer for five more minutes. Now, you know, it's partially whipped and then I'm going to try again. So uh, I will see you right back. Okay, so five minutes makes a huge difference. So look how thick that is now. So I think it's going to whip up fine. Um, so yeah, I mean, it just it just goes to show if you if it doesn't whip up for you, just just put it in a few minutes longer and try again. Don't you know? Don't throw it out or give up. All right. Right, so now, oops, oh, I made a mess on my little form here. All right, so now I am going to get a tablespoon because I want approximately a tablespoon in each one of these wells. Um, so here, oh, I just thought I should give you a look. So you want it to be thick. Now, uh, I think the last time I made this, it almost looked like butter icing or something. So maybe another couple of minutes in the fridge would have done that. But um, this is actually, if it's like this, it's a little bit easier to work with um, because then you can just scoop it out a tablespoon at a time and place it in here. So um, before, when I made those other ones I showed you, I had to like squish them in with a spatula. Now I'm going to try to make this 16 equal servings, you know, for measurement purposes. Hopefully I'll be able to do that. Just because there's 16 tablespoons of butter in one of those um, butter bars that I showed you, the, the two sticks. Okay, so I'm almost at 16 here, so I'm going to top up some of these other ones a bit. And I, I guess the other thing that you could do is put it in a jar like this and just measure out your tablespoons each time. There's that option as well. All right, so I think I've made enough of a mess here, but so here's my 16 tablespoons of, of whipped brown butter that are going to go into the freezer. And that bell is Teddy ringing the bell to go outside. <laughs> okay, I am going to be right back because I'm going to grab, I'm gonna put this in the freezer. I'm gonna let Teddy out to do his business. And I'm going to grab the other bites that I put in the freezer earlier because they will be ready by now. So we'll see you back in the next segment. Okay, I'm back, Teddy's back. So I wanna show you, I'm gonna compare. This is the one from this morning. This is where I brought the brown butter to a chocolate consistency. So I'm gonna put it there and we'll compare it to these ones that we just did. And you can see that it's a lighter color. Um, because on this one, I, I went, I didn't go all the way to chocolate. I, I went kind of medium. So, you know, it really depends on, on your, your taste and flavor. But these are delicious, and for these ones, I do use salted butter rather than unsalted. And uh, I also, when I did those whipped um, brown butter bites, the bigger ones, I also use salted for that. 
If you're going to, I just want to mention, if you're going to use the uh, keto chow to make yourself some some butter bites, keto chow butter bites, don't don't use salted butter because it's going to be way too salty. Use unsalted. Um, so I think uh, I think that kind of wraps this up. Uh, I have enough uh, bites to last me a week or so uh, before I need to make some more, and I. I think I shared all the tips with you that I could remember, but please ask any questions down below. I'm happy to answer them. Um, you know, I, I try to answer all the comments and questions. So um, it's no trouble if, if I didn't cover everything. No, I don't think you'd like the butter bites, Teddy. He probably thinks I've made some more of those yummy meat chips from the other day. Um, yeah, so uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this and I hope you will give this a try and uh, we will see you on the next video. Cut that because I probably said that wrong. Everybody's going to tell me.